In this video, we're going to start off the chapter number patterns for grade 10 by looking at linear number patterns. A number pattern is classified as a linear number pattern if there is a constant difference between consecutive terms. This means that you constantly add the same value to get the next term, or you constantly subtract the same value to get the next term. This is summed up by the formula for constant difference, which is term 2 minus term 1, the difference between the first two terms, will be the same as term 3 minus term 2, or even the same as Tn minus Tn minus 1. When working with number patterns, it is very useful to have a general formula or rule for the specific pattern you are working with. Such a rule or formula can be used to determine the value of any number in that sequence. In any rule or formula, specific symbols are used. N and Tn occur in all the number pattern formulas. N indicates the position of a specific term in the row. And Tn indicates the value of a specific term. The general formula for a linear number pattern is always in the form Tn is equal to Bn plus C. Next, we're going to have a look at how to determine the constant values for B and C for a specific number pattern. Example 1. Consider the sequence 8, 10, 12, 14. Here you can see that we add 2 every single time to determine the value of the next term. This means that there is a constant difference, which means it is a linear number pattern. Because we keep on adding 2 every time, we are going to add 2 a specific number of times. And that is why we always start the general formula with 2 times n. If we stop our general formula here, we accept that the sequence starts at 2 and that we add 2 from there onwards, which is not correct. Therefore, we need to determine what should be added to every single one of these values to get the actual row that we are working with. And here it is clear to see that we still need to add 6 every time to get the correct row. Here we now have our general rule. This means that B in the general formula always indicates the constant difference and the C value in the formula is the adjustment that still needs to be made. If you work backwards determining the value in front of term 1, you will see that that is also 6. So you can choose to determine the value of C by determining term 0. B. Determine the value of the 20th term in the sequence. We now already have a general rule, so if we want to determine the value, the Tn, of the 20th term in the sequence, I can take the general rule and say T20, and to determine this, I will simply change N to the 20th term in the sequence. So we have 40 plus 6, and that will give us 46. So the value of the 20th term in the sequence is 46. Question C. Which term in the sequence has a value of 74? So this time we are given the left-hand side of the general rule, the value, and we are asked to determine the position. Here we are going to solve a linear equation. So I'm going to start by subtracting 6 on the left hand side. And when I divide both sides by 2, I can say that n is the 34th term in the row. Example 2. Consider the sequence and once again we are asked to determine the general formula or rule for the sequence. This time there is a constant difference of minus 12 from the one term to the next. 
And for the general formula, we are again going to start by saying this constant difference multiplied by n. So this statement says that we are starting at minus 12 and then subtracting 12 every single time. But this is not correct. In reality, we need to still add quite a lot to get to the actual row. That which we should add is another 137. And this 137 is our C value in the formula. Remember that you can always test yourself. For example, if I calculate the fourth term using my general formula by changing n to 4, I will get a value of 89, which is the correct fourth term. Question B. Determine T9. So here we want the value of the ninth term. So I'm going to take my formula and simply substitute in with 9 on the right hand side as well. This will give me the value for the ninth term as 29. Question C. Which term is the first term in the sequence with a negative value? We just determined that term 9 has a value of 29. So from here we can continue to determine term 10 by subtracting another 12 to get 17. And then term 11 we can subtract another 12. And then when we determine term 12 you will see that this is the first negative value. You can also determine this using algebra because we want the value, which is our general formula, of the first negative term and that means smaller than zero. So to solve n, I'm going to add the 12n on the right hand side. And next, if I now divide both sides by 12, I will get a value of 11,42. This means that the 11th term is still positive or bigger than 0 and the 12th term will then be the first term with a negative value. 